Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Sorry I've not uploaded any videos over the last couple of weeks. Um, two reasons really, one being Brenda, her, her health has declined quite a lot over the last couple of weeks. And also the second reason just being me, I just, you know, having to deal with Brenda and everything, I just haven't really felt up to it. And I will go into more detail about that um, once I've kind of spoken about Brenda. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Claire. Um, I'm a full-time carer. I live with my nan-in-law. I have a dementia blog on YouTube where I talk about Brenda and, and the things that we face with Brenda and her dementia. Um, so I will put all the details. They'll be on the screen somewhere not sure where so like I said Brenda's health has really declined over the last couple of weeks this tends to happen um, we'll kind of go along kind of nice and gently and then all of a sudden she'll take a massive nosedive and you notice that you know there's certain things she can't do anymore it happened with her walking like I discussed in one of my other videos she literally went from being able to walk to not being able to walk pretty much overnight um, so it does happen she'll dip and then she'll kind of plateau for quite quite a few months I mean she'll she'll kind of stay the same for quite a long time and then she'll take a nosedive again and you'll notice other things that maybe she's forgotten how to do or she, you know she can't do anymore um, so it's it's been a rough couple of weeks um, for those of you who know our situation and know kind of Brenda she is severe severe end of life dementia bed bound for almost a year and a half now the last time i spoke about her she her coughing was really bad um that has got worse and worse and worse and um, the doctor did say it would she basically can't chew swallow her food and drinks properly um you know food has to be liquidized drinks have to be thickened um obviously i feed her she can't feed herself and she's just choking and choking on everything now um the choking's been going on for quite a long time but it has got a lot lot worse basically all the food is getting caught up in her throat and all the fluids and everything and you can hear it now it's almost like a rattle you know she breathes in and you can hear all, all the food and drink kind of rattling around in the back of her throat um almost like a phlegm like if you've got a really phlegmy <laughs> sounds disgusting if you've got a really phlegmy throat you know if you've had a chest infection or anything like that and you breathe in you take that breath in and you can hear it kind of all gurgling around in your in your throat that's what she's like probably 50 percent of the time now um and of course because she's elderly and she's so frail and she has dementia she just can't clear it i mean you can sit there till you're blue in the face and believe me i've tried to get her to cough properly but she doesn't she hasn't got the energy she hasn't got the know-how she just sits there <coughs> these tiny kind of weak coughs and you can hear that phlegm coming up and then all of a sudden she'll swallow it back down again and it drives you absolutely crazy um, it's really horrible and there's been several times over the last week where you think oh my god you know this is it she's gonna die because she's just choking to death like I said the doctor did say this was gonna happen we actually had a visit from the doctor last week just a checkup we get her to come every kind of two months I guess just for a checkup um, and she said eventually all this you know this fluid and, and food that is kind of gathering in her throat will eventually go down into her chest and she will get pneumonia and like i've said before that probably will be the thing that kills her um but i must admit it's really horrible to kind of witness this she's she's drowning basically um but this it really has got bad over the last couple of weeks and there's nothing we can do about it. You know, we try cough medicines, we try giving her drinks, we try not giving her drinks. Normally, of a morning time, probably nine times out of 10, she would have kind of a small bowl of porridge. We've actually stopped giving that to her now, just because, I don't know whether it was the dairy content or the fact that the porridge was kind of lumpy and, 
you know, what porridge is like. We noticed every time she had this porridge, she would choke and the phlegm would start. Um, so the porridge has stopped. So now for breakfast, either we give her a small yogurt, which is again dairy, but it is so thin and it just kind of slides down her throat. She hasn't got to think about chewing it. Um, she hasn't even really got to think about swallowing it. It just kind of disintegrates in her mouth. Um, also mashed banana again that kind of just disintegrates by itself she hasn't really got much thinking to do with that and um, because you watch her you watch her eating and drinking and she just cannot get her head around what she is doing um even if you sit there and and tell her what to do she she doesn't know half the time she's not paying attention the other half she just it just doesn't work um, and you can find yourself getting quite frustrated by it um, and it's not her fault <laughs> you just want to shake her sometime um, but yeah so the the banana has been good I think because it's so slimy it does just kind of slide down the throat and also little pots of jelly we've been giving her as well again that kind of disintegrates slides down the throat easily she hasn't got a kind of think about it too much so her food and drink intake has decreased dramatically over the last two weeks she didn't drink that much and she didn't eat that much anyway she's absolutely tiny um, and now she's eating and drinking even less another thing that's been hard when it comes to her eating and her drinking in particular She's been do doing this for quite some time and if any of you have watched my other videos you'll know that she tends to have these little habits that she does. Um, she done this whole sniffing thing, you know, she would sit there and constantly sniff. It's now caused her left nostril to collapse and it's like completely encaved into her face. Um, that has stopped, thank God, because that was really irritating. I know that sounds awful. But, you know, you're sitting there and you've got someone sniffing continuously. It starts to drive you up the wall a little bit. Um, and plus, we was really worried that the other nostril was kind of going to go down the same route. So, thankfully, she's stopped doing that. The next one, which was the most recent, she was biting her lip. And I was finding a lot of blood in her mouth. And she even got a fat lip a couple of weeks ago just from constantly kind of gnawing on her, her lips. That has thankfully stopped. However, we have a new one. <laughs> um, she's done this actually for a really, really long time, but it's now kind of becoming a problem. She does this thing with her tongue. She, oh, I, I don't know, this tongue has got gets more action than I don't know what. She just lays it all day like this. Constantly. It's in the mouth, it's out the mouth, it's around the mouth. She, it just constantly is moving around. I don't know how her lips haven't fallen off. And what we find now, she's done it a little bit before, but now it's it's really, she's really going for it. When we go to put the straw in her mouth to give her a drink, she's completely fighting us the whole way. You really have to, sounds terrible, really have to get this straw and like jam it in her mouth and really try and push past her tongue and it's not because she doesn't want to drink you know there's going to be some people that think well she obviously just doesn't want to have a drink it's not that she hasn't got the concept to kind of think like that it's just this tongue is just wagging it around constantly and you, you've really got to kind of navigate around it to get this straw in her mouth to give her a drink um to the point that her tongue is actually getting bruised I didn't think that this was possible. I didn't think you could bruise your tongue, but apparently you can with a straw. It just, this tongue, honestly, it's incredible. It must be the strongest muscle in her body because it does not stop moving. Um, even when she's asleep, it's like this, it's crazy. So along with the choking and the tongue, getting her to actually consume any food or drink is quite a challenge. The next thing that I've noticed um, last couple of weeks, which is really it's eerie, she's lost 
her kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, how to kind of use the muscles in her eyelids. I don't know if that's the best way of describing it. Basically, she can't shut her eyes properly. The only way I can describe it is when you was young and you was given a toy doll and their eyelids kind of, every time you move them around, their eyelids would open or they would close or whatever direction that you kind of went. These eyes, these are what Brenda's eyes are like. It is so eerie and I'm laughing because you, if you don't laugh, you kind of have to cry. Um, but I look at her sometimes, I don't know if she's asleep, I don't know if she's awake, because these eyes will not close properly. Sometimes they do, don't get me wrong, sometimes her eyes are completely shut. But she's started sleeping basically with her eyes open. Sometimes you have to kind of check. I mean, I do this anyway. Sometimes she looks really ill and you look at her and you think, oh my God, is she dead? Well, now with the whole eyeball thing, sometimes it really is scary. And you just look and you think, oh my God, she's gone. She's not. She's just asleep with her eyes half open. Um, it's very, very strange. I've never known anyone who's slept with their eyes open before. I know there are people that do it. But it's just when she's kind of lost the muscle movement. So the last couple of weeks have been hard, especially with the coughing. I can't describe to you how disgusting it, it sounds it, it she just is continuously rattling she does these really weak little coughs where she's trying to get it up and and you f you feel yourself sitting there kind of your muscles are, are clenching because you think oh look you know she's she's breathing in she's taking a deep breath oh she's going to have a big cough no no she doesn't and it, it is so frustrating and this is kind of another reason why I haven't done any videos over the last couple of weeks is just because I've been a bit down in the dumps if I'm completely honest um, I'm quite a positive person you know I, not that I like to make a joke out of Brenda's illness or anything like that but you know sometimes you just have to laugh at these things like the eyes like the tongue you, you've just got to kind of laugh it off because it can really get to you. I mean, I've lived with Brenda for a while now, me and my husband, and living with someone with dementia, especially when they're at the end of their life, um, and it really is a waiting game for us now. Um, it, you know, it could happen at any point. And that in itself is such an emotional, Thing to have to go through um, it's not something I try and think about but you know I wake up in the morning and I walk downstairs and I generally don't know what I'm gonna find you know and in cases where her eyes are half open you know and so or her breathing's really bad you look at her sometimes you think oh my god you know this is it this is the moment she's she's gonna die um, and it's, it's really tough I think we are kind of coming to the end now although the doctor can't say to us yes this is you know definitely the end or anything like that um i mean every time the doctor comes she she still can't believe that brenda's still here you don't think we have much longer i think when it does happen it's going to happen quite quickly i think she's just going to deteriorate even more so than what she has over the last couple of weeks. I've just felt quite sad recently about the whole situation. You know, it's it's the unknown. It's the unknown of what I'm gonna find in the morning. It's the unknown of how she's gonna go. It's the unknown of how it's gonna make me feel, what I'm gonna do with my life after she goes. Um, and just the guilt that you feel you know, if you go out for a couple of hours or um, you know you you sit there sometimes of an evening and you're eating your dinner and she's choking and coughing and splattering around and the tongue's waggling around and and you just want some peace and quiet and it sounds so awful 
to say that sort of thing you just look at her and think what what is the point you know what are we achieving why are we still feeding you why are we still giving you drink what is the point my whole world revolves around brenda and i just don't know what my life is going to be like when she's not here anymore i always knew it would happen i always expected it to happen a lot sooner than it has um i never thought that when i became her carer five years ago i never thought i would be her carer in five years time um i didn't expect her to live this long certainly once we put her to bed we never expected her to live as long as she has but i look at her and it's just so sad so sad on facebook there's quite a few groups that i joined um and i'm not one for kind of talking about my feelings with this sort of thing and you know a lot of people write on these facebook pages how they're feeling and put up pictures and, and it's lovely you know i it's not something that i tend to do i mean i do these videos um i'm quite honest and quite blunt I suppose about the disease um, I want to do more videos and this time that I've taken out from doing the videos I've had to kind of think about it all and what I want to achieve and things that I want to talk about when doing these videos and everything and I actually had someone comment on one of my videos on YouTube and ask me a couple of questions so you know, I, I want to do maybe some shorter videos that answer questions and talk about the kind of different areas of dementia that I've dealt with and, and whatnot. And I'd like to do videos on kind of how it makes me feel and what it is like living with a loved one with dementia and having it, you know, just control your whole life because it does control my whole life. And I love Brenda dearly, but... I, I feel like the time has come for it to end. Part of me really doesn't want it to end because I love looking after Brenda. You know, it's what I do every day. My whole world revolves around that and I enjoy my job and I enjoy looking after her. But a big part of me just wants it to be over now. I want my life back. <laughs> and even that makes you feel so guilty it makes you feel like you know you i'm not dying she's the one that's dying i should feel sorry for her but and i do feel sorry for her of course i feel sorry for her but i also feel very sorry for myself i also feel sorry for my husband and my mother-in-law and everyone else that is involved in looking after Brenda and her care and it just gets really hard sometimes and the last couple of weeks have, I've, I've just been a bit of a Debbie Downer that's how I feel at the moment I just feel a little bit down in the dumps about it all I just I want it to be over for her and I want it to be over for myself but I selfishly want it to continue because I want her around and I enjoy looking after her but I think we've come to the point now where my enjoyment in looking after her and, and all, all of what that entails is kind of being overridden now by that feeling of I want my life back I want a normal life I want to be able to leave my house at any point of the day that I want to without consulting anyone else without having someone come in and sit with Brenda while I'm gone or you know if I want to pop to the shops for two hours I can do that guilt-free 
I don't feel guilty leaving her because she might die when I'm out and she was, she's going to be alone when she dies and that thought terrifies me you know I just want to kind of live my life I want to be able to go out on a Sunday with my husband and not have to worry about what time we're getting home it's just the whole situation has just got to me over the last couple of weeks and I think with Brenda's decline that's just really magnified sorry for crying <laughs> <laughs> so that is just what's been going on the last couple of weeks like I said I'm going to do more videos I'm going to try and keep them shorter and a bit more concise and look at these Facebook pages these dementia pages on Facebook and there's so many people going through the same sort of thing that I am but there are all these different stages and I've kind of done the whole process now barring her death um, and you know there's a lot of things that we've had to deal with and there's a lot of questions that people are asking so I think I'm just gonna maybe keep looking at them and doing these videos and trying to answer them questions and if people watch it then great if they don't so be it it's no harm done um, if you're watching this and you agree with me or disagree with me or would like me to cover something um, or would like me to talk about something please let me know please pop it in the comments um, you know I, I'm quite realistic and quite honest um, I do absolutely everything for Brenda um, even her bowel movements I'm in complete control of them <laughs> So any questions at all, please ask and I will try and answer them. I'm not the oracle. I don't know everything there is to know about dementia. Um, but it's kind of a starting point for people to talk about things. I hope this helps. I hope this kind of gives you an insight into more about me as a person and as a carer um, and obviously you know Brenda has had this decline and it kind of gives you a little idea of what's going on with her right now um, and hopefully my next video will be a little bit chirpier so that is it guys see you next time take care bye you guys